welcome back. Super Sports Saturday it continues from the Minnesota Motor Company. Kind of winding down seasons here. We uh, finished out the girls' hockey season. I, I hope we have a chance to talk some boys' hockey. If not, then maybe we can get Coach Donahue on talking sports sometime in the near future because they ended their season. Uh, definitely a game, uh, at least one game too soon, I believe. But we'll get to that in a little while. Playoff time for the uh, boys swimming and diving team. Section 3A swimming uh, going on in Morris. And Tom Uvis is here. Why, why is he supposed to be down with the swimmers? Well, it's close enough, you know. They can uh, just drive down today. And uh, Tom had to sleep in his own bed last night from the sounds of things. You're not feeling too oh, well, Coach. You okay? I have, a, I have a bad cold, but I'm, I'm here. I'm oh, good. Right. So I'm, I'm here, here in spirit. <laughs> Everything else. All right, all right. Well, well, how are the boys doing down at uh, UF Morris? We had a really nice meet. You know, it's a two-day meet that was set up. You have to swim well Friday to, do, to be in position to do well on Saturday. And we swam really a very excellent first day um we're in good positions um we have all three relays in a position to go to state um of course you have to perform today and you have to be in top four for state cut time today um we're very deep in the im we have three in the top eight in the im we have three in the top eight in the butterfly and we have three in the top eight and the breaststroke and those will be our dominating events point wise square wise um we have two in the top eight in the 100 freestyle. Um, in the 500, we have two will be scoring. In the backstroke, we have two will be scoring. In the 200 freestyle, we'll have two will be scoring. So and overall, we did a very nice job. Everyone qualified for second day, which is really good to see. And we took a team of only 12 swimmers. We have four divers that are participating right now this morning. And it's, it's to win sections is both quality and depth. Because there are four swimmers that get to score if they can make in the top 16. And it's going to be a great meet against Wilmer and Fergus. And I think Melrose Sox Center will be in there somewhere. And it should be fun to watch. If the Otters perform uh, today uh, like you did yesterday or, or even improve a little bit in, in their placings, you'll be, uh, well, possibly section champs today. Possibly. We'll see. You know, uh, we always swim better the second day we do the first day. We're very conservative with our relay starts. Um, a new pool for us, even though we've been there a few times, but we don't swim meets there. Uh, last time we were there about, I suppose, three, four years ago for sections. So where we used to have, you know, dual meets and once in a while, we swim Morris and dual meet, we swim USS meets there, so it's still no pool to us. And uh, so we, uh, I think we have the jitters out of that, and I think the second day is where we're going to perform a little bit stronger. The other trick with this is that we have two-team taper. We have a state taper going on right now, which means you're a little off that weekend. And then, of course, you have a section taper, which we hope we really hit. And we did. And then IMs, we dropped five seconds per individual in that, in that event. Um, Eric Money had just an absolutely fantastic meet. Uh, dropped five seconds in the IM. He dropped three seconds in higher breaststroke. Uh, Clay Mortensen in that event also dropped five seconds in that event. Also dropped about two seconds in the breaststroke. And then Matthew Jacobson also dropped five seconds in that event and dropped two seconds in the fly. And so those are very good tapers for those kids, and I think it just it just really got them going and, and fired up. Um, the Hurley boys right now are um, are swimming very well, and, and they are, they're going to play as well, but their taper obviously will be the state taper, which where we hope that they really have some significant individual drops. Well, now Mike relates that uh, a record yesterday, right? The pool and the section record in uh, the IM, was it? Yeah, he did. Um, his time was a 156, which is a very nice time. He's going a little bit faster than that, but but that was a nice time. And again, you know, he he um, he race, He did a, he just split a 46 in the four and free relay. I really needed that because we just out touched the Hutch team in that. Um, so he he he'll, he'll race and do well today. And and um, and again, we're hoping that. Uh, he stays healthy and has, has a, also a very good meet today, but hopefully a very good meet next week, too. That's exciting to see uh, the guys get in there and, and after these weeks of prep time and, and tapering. And I don't know if anybody has better tapers than the Otters. And that's uh, hats off to you, Tom, for, for knowing your swimmers so well and, and knowing how to train them. I mean, that, so much of that goes on uh, behind the scenes that we don't see. We just see the results in the water, and that uh, is a testimony enough to, to how you know how to taper these guys. Well, it, there's a lot of combinations here, and, and first of all, the biggest combination is preparation. Uh, this is a team from day one. 
that you know, if all three of us were coaches here, we would really enjoy coaching a team like this because they love to train. I don't care what the sport is. I don't care if it's, you name the sport. If you've got a group of kids that are willing to stay either on the field longer or stay in the gym longer or on the rink longer, whatever, to 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 hone their skills or say, hey, we want to come in mornings and do some shooting, and we want, you know, we have a team like that. So we want a morning practice on Mondays and a morning practice on Friday. We even did a morning practice during our taper, which is a little unusual, but they really wanted to do it. And I'm a little, I'm a little worried about stuff like that because you never know how it's going to turn out. But it worked out really well. And uh, so preparation is part of it. And number two, I think, is, um, is is kind of more of a tradition. Like last year, we had a very good taper. We used the same practice we used last year. We call it like a recipe book. So we take out the same recipes we've used before, and they have confidence in those. And we really let them... Um, become the guide in their training at this time because they have to really know what they're doing. And so it's a nice, mature team that's had some success, and you can do a lot with talent. I know, uh, you know we hear a lot about the guys that win events and finish second and run up and get the state and all that, but like you said, the depth comes into play there, and you've seen some great strides from some of the guys uh, on this team who are just scoring some clutch points for you. You know, I, that's just such a nice lead-in. Thank you. Um, there's a boy on this team that did just an unbelievable job, and and Clay Danielson, and you know Clay epitomizes what taper is all about because he swam the 20-yard freestyle, he dropped six seconds in that event, in the 500 he dropped 14 seconds to a 526. He he just missed top eight by four hundredths of a second, so he's ninth place. He's he's got to perform well today to hold that ninth place, and I think he will. But what impressed me more than anything is how he really swam his game plan. We talked about turns for him. We talked about his breathing pattern. He swam it to a T. And as a coach, when you see this, Coach Charles and I were watching that 500, I said, this is so neat to see. I'm just hoping it could hold on. So he had a fantastic meet. Nathan Langston was a second-year swimmer. He's only swam us for two years. He came out as a junior. And I'd be honest with you, he could do very well in college somewhere because he's just beginning to figure out the sport. He dropped two seconds in the backstroke down to a 105, and he qualified 14th or 15th, which is just great. So, so those are the things you kind of look forward to, and and as well as you know everybody, you know, I'm, Don McJones had a very good um, 50 freestyle and 100 breaststroke. Uh, Jake Fisher, who's not even tapered for this meet, had some significant times in the relays, especially in the 100 yard freestyle, um, and uh, uh, Joe Kitzman had a, a phenomenal. Um, butterfly, as well as you know, Keegan's right in there, um, and plus he's on the 500 freestyle. He's so very smart, uh, so he's ready for today. So it's just it's fun to watch these kids develop so well. You mentioned Tom too the, at the start here that you had all three relays in a position to uh, perhaps qualify for state. How uncommon is that? Because usually you have to sacrifice somewhere in one of the relays, it seems, uh, at sections because there's such stiff competition and you have to spread people out in individual events. And it's hard to get three relays to state. You know, it really is. And, um, of course, this year what we did is we, we took Jake Fisher out of an individual event and put him in three relays. And it's nice he's willing to do that. Um, it's tight. Well, that, that 200 freestyle really... Um, we'll have to drop uh, at least drop a second today, and then um, next week we're going to have to really figure out a few things to squeak another second on them because we like them to place top eight in state, or at least top ten, because uh, if we're looking at maybe being in the top five in state, we need to score three relays there, and that's one of our goals. So, But uh, it'll be fun to see what we can do. All right, and today uh, the action at the University of Minnesota Morris. What time do you get rolling? I know you said the divers are going right now, but when do the, the swimming finals begin? It starts at 2 o'clock for the finals. There will be swimming and diving finals. Um, University of Minnesota Morris is a beautiful facility. It's an A-lane pool. Um, it's got it's a good venue to, for watching the meet, and uh, it should be very, very exciting. All right. Well, you take care of that cold, and uh, I know uh, you'll be out there uh, leading your otters uh, on the deck and and what should be an exciting day, and good luck as you go after that section the championship, and we'll look forward to getting the results on who's going to state. i got to talk about one more person. I want to make sure I don't miss anybody. Andrew Sturger, by the way, did just a phenomenal job on the fly. He, he got in eighth place. He also swam the 200 freestyle, did just a great job there. Um, and it's a 200 freestyle, really, uh, or far free, really. But, uh, you know, again, it's just fun to watch these kids really drop time and, and do so well.
All right. Great team. Great year continues today at uh, the section meet at the University of Minnesota Morris. And good luck to the divers who are competing right now. Kyle Rust is coming back. You know, he, he damaged his ear a little bit and a little bit of courage and uh, maybe answers to prayer too. We hope that uh, he's going to be diving today and, and he looks very good. And of course we have uh, um, Michael and, and Mikey and, uh, and Reed. So those those four boys are going to do a great job with Coach Hartwell at 10 o'clock today. Yeah, and if anybody, uh, if they're, they are listening to the radio, what are you doing? Go dive, will you? Go and right. dive. Don't focus on that. Get away from the radio. <laughs> I'm kidding, by the way. Oh. That's been fun to see those divers score some points for the Otters yeah. this year, and that's really helped out, hasn't it? Yeah, Coach Hartwell's done a great job. You know, it just it takes time, and and uh, he's developing. You know, what's really neat is we got four divers going to do 11 dives. They're all coming back. There's not one senior on there. Um, you know, it's kind of neat. We we have three seniors in this section meet. This is their last section ever. Uh, Eric Money, of course, and then uh, we have, of course, Mike Hurley, and this is his last, really, set, well, this is his last section meet, period. And then, of course, we have Nathan Langston. So it's kind of a special time for them. Absolutely. Very good, Tom. Thanks for coming in. Kind of surprised us by being here today, didn't he? We thought he might be staying overnight. Yeah, absolutely, and I certainly appreciate that. We look forward to talking again next week about us. Well, no, uh, you'll be at State. That's right. But that's yeah. okay. We'll get you on the radio some way, somehow, to figure out what's going on. Uh, let's see. Tom Uvis with the boys swimming and diving team. Let's take a time out. We'll come back and talk about some other things going on. we got some wrestling happening this weekend. Girls Hockey State. we got uh, sectional for boys hockey. we got all kinds of things to get to when it comes to sports. That's why we call it Super sports saturday